Hi, this is Jack for iPokerVIP.net. Today is going to be part three of the five part concept video series. And this is going to be talking about free betting and full betting strategies, both in and out of position. So first, let's think about why we free bet. Um, we're going to free bet for two reasons, essentially. One is for value, one is a semi bluff. And for value, our range is generally going to be Jack's plus and ace king uh, against some particularly aggressive players who we know they're going to full bet us a lot. Uh, both for both for fin value and as a bluff, um, we can start to free bet with more hands like ace queen, uh, pocket nines, pocket tens, hands that you know play well against their range and good enough to shove over a shove over a four bet. There's also going to be times where we want to free bet as a semi bluff. This is essentially where we free bet with a non-value hand to try and get folds. Our strategy is going to change based on whether we're in position or out of position, and it's also going to change based on our opponent. Clearly, if we're against some kind of huge fish then we don't want to free bet as a bluff, we just want to free bet for value and we want to widen our value range to include hands like King Queen, Ace Jack suited, all those type of things. But uh, in terms of playing against regs, we're definitely going to want to be semi, semi bluff in some percentage of the time. And there's a couple of reasons, well the main reason why is for balance essentially, we can't just free bet Jack's plus and Ace King because that's 3% of hands, it's going to make us very very easy to play against. Whereas if, we free bet in, if we're free betting like 7 or 8%, we become a lot more difficult to play against because we're still going to show up with those big hands um, a decent percentage of the time that we free bet. We're also going to have some uh, deceptive hands in there that, you know, hands like 6, 7 suited, where it's gonna, he's not going to ever put us on those hands. Um, so, it's, you know, we're going to show profit there when we manage to hit post-flop. Um, now, in general, most of our opponents aren't going to fold enough pre-flop to just justify free bet bluffing with any two cards. Um, a lot of our profit is going to come from timing. So... Uh, situations where we are bound to get credit. For example, there's times where if I think someone is a fairly tight player and I open from the cutoff and they free bet from the blinds, there's times where I'll just fold like ace jack offsuit there, which is clearly exploitable because it's towards the top of my range and I should be defending it. But if I just think they're a tight player and they've been pretty snug and I don't think they're exploiting me, then I'm just going to go ahead and fold that. So this is times where you need to uh, really know your image. If you've got quite a maniac image, then you probably don't want to be uh, free bet bluffing so much post uh, pre flop. And if you've got a very very tight image, and or you know maybe not in general, but maybe you've just got a tight image of that table against a new opponent. Maybe you've played a few orbits, you haven't caught any hands. Then it's going to be a really good idea to start throwing in some light free bets because you're just going to get a lot of credit. You're going to get a lot of folds, either pre flop or if he does call with a hand like pocket tens and the flop comes like king seven four, he might give you enough credit just to fold that hand on the flop there if he if he perceives you as a tight player. So mostly the profitability is going to come from a continuation bet. Like we said, we're probably not going to get folds enough of the time pre flop um, in in general. Um, and the reason why our profitability comes from our C bet is because when we, when we C bet half pot, we're only going to need uh, our opponent to fold um, a third of the time. And if uh, we have a draw, then it's going to be much less than that. If we got a flush draw or a straight draw, uh, or maybe like um, a couple of overcards, then we're going to need much less fold equity than thirty three percent. Because of course, sometimes when we do get called, we're going to hit. And of those times that we get hit, sometimes we're going to get paid off. Um, you know, if we got ace queen and it's a low flop and we see bet and he calls the pocket tens, the so turns a queen, he might not believe us, he might put us on ace king, ace jack, and he might just continue to call down with pocket tens there. So let's think about the hands that we choose to free bet. Um, our position, most regulars are going to play four bet or fold. I think that should be something that you've experienced in the games, definitely. Um, doesn't make much sense to call free bets when you're out of position. Uh, because if you open middle position, let's say the button free bets, and you've got a hand like pocket tens, it doesn't really make much sense to call there because as soon as an overcard comes, it's very tricky to play. And as soon as the low flop comes and he multi barrels, again, it's still, you're in a very tricky spot. Uh, additionally, you don't really want to call hands there with like six, seven suited just because you're going to miss the flop so much. And even with ace queen uh, or ace jack suited, say, um, you know, when, when the flop comes low, it's a spot where you might be able to win the pot by check raise bluffing. But check raise bluffing is going to be extremely expensive in a free bet pot because you just you know the pot's so much bigger. You have to make your check raise a lot bigger as well. Um, additionally, when you do flop a pair and you get multi barreled, it's a type of spot where uh, your hand is kind of face up after you check call a couple of streets, and so it's, you know you're going to be in a very dicey spot as to whether you think he's going to bluff the river, whether you think he's going to value bet more thinly than what you've got. Uh, it's just going to be a very tricky spot. So most people aren't going to flat free bets um, out of position. Uh, if they're any good. Now what that means is they're going to play full bet or fold. So when we're free betting in position, we want hands that have blockers which are going to make them less likely to full bet. So we want hands like ace 10 off, king jack off, where they're not good enough to call a raise obviously from like a middle position or early position opener, 
Um, but they're good enough to free bet because if we've got a decent image at least, then we're going to get a lot of folds there since he's he's either playing four bet or fold, and we block a lot of the hands that he'd four bet. Um, when most regulars are in position, they're going to call free bets a decent amount. So it's likely that we're not going to get our, our required pre-flop equity and we're going to have to play post-flop. Now, in terms of what he's putting us on when he calls a free bet, obviously, if he puts us on aces, he's not going to call a free bet for 100 big blinds because there's nothing he can call with that is, can outplay aces. Um, he's going to be putting us on hands like ace-king and ace-queen, king-queen, high card hands, essentially. Now, what that means is when the flop comes low uh, or mid-lin, so like 9-6-2, 10-8-7, uh, he's going to be looking to float or bluff raise on those boards because he knows that uh, it doesn't particularly hit our perceived range. Our perceived range is obviously big pairs and high card hands. And in terms of combos, uh, on any lower middle in flop, we're going to have way, way, way more over card hands than we are going to have uh, big pairs. And when a flop comes broadway, so when the flop comes like ace xx, king xx, queen xx, likelihood is he's going to put us on a range of hands that hits that ball pretty hard. And he's not going to play back. As, he's going to play quite straightforwardly. He's not going to play back at as much on that board. So in terms of the boards we want to hit with our bluffs, we want to be able to hit the low middling boards of our bluffs because they're the boards that he's going to play back at us on. So now when we're on those uh, low middling boards, we can either play back at him obviously with our over pairs, which aren't going to go anywhere for like 100 big blinds, or we can play back at him with hands that actually hit it. So if we have uh, you know 8-6 suited and the flop comes you know 8-5, Three, where we've got an open ender and an overcard, we're gonna be quite happy if he's to, you know, if he's an aggressive player at least, and he puts in like a raise on that ball, we're gonna be quite happy going with our hand for 100 big blinds because we've got a lot of equity versus just about anything. Uh, we already hit the Broadway boards of our value range, so we don't need to hit it with our bluff range. What I mean by that is, um, obviously, he's gonna play straight, he's gonna play quite straightforwardly on the Broadway cards. Um, so we, we don't need to hit it with 100% of our range, we just need to hit it with our value range so that we can be comfortable stacking off. Um, additionally, we want to be polarised on the Broadway boards uh, because if, if, if he does play back at us, if he throws in a raise or uh, if he you know calls a couple of times on like King XX, he's generally going to have a pretty good hand there um, because most people just don't play back on those type of board textures. They generally just give you credit. Um, because they know it hits your range a lot harder as the preflop free better than it does as the preflop free bet cooler. Um, so we don't want hands like King 10 on King XX because that's going to be really tricky to play. I mean, if he puts in a raise on that flop, it's kind of like the pot's huge and you sort of have to go with your hand for 100 big blinds because there's not much to beat you. But at the same time, he's never going to have any worse hands for value and you're going to have very, very, very bad equity when you get it in because you're either going to be dead to a set or he's going to have like King Queen so you've only got three outs to hit a 10. Um, so looking at some uh, kind of uh, image files of what we want to be free betting in certain spots. Uh, free betting in position first. Let's say a reg opens to 3x, free big blinds, and we make it 9x. We're risking 9 to win 4.5 that's in the pot, the regs open plus uh, the blinds. So we need about 67% fold equity there. Um, we're going to tweak our range based on our opponent. So if we think that he's more likely to throw in a 4-bet, or if we think he's particularly likely to flat call, um, then we're not going to be free betting. We're not going to be free betting the bluff part of our range. It's just going to be free bet for value. Additionally, if we don't think that he's, uh, if we don't think that he's going to be four betting us hardly ever, then we might not. We might not want to free bet ace king or our pocket jacks because obviously, if he's only four betting like really strong hands for value, then we're going to do quite badly getting it in versus his range. And also, obviously, those hands play well post flop. I mean, if you flat, if you flat pre flop with ace king. And the flop comes ace xx or king xx. You're generally going to win a big pot if he's got an ace or a king because it, you know, if he's got like ace jack on ace eight four, it's pretty hard for him to be beat if you just flat call pre flop when he's thinking about your range. Uh, if you know that he folds too much, so if you know that when he's under the gun or in middle position, he's opening say twenty percent of hands and he's going to fold like seventy five, eighty percent to a free bet, then you want to add in, um, you want to add in a lot more of these. Uh, you know, these are high card blocker hands, so like queen jack off, ace nine off, all those type of hands, hands that you can't really feel very good about calling. Uh, moving on to free betting in position, or oh, sorry, free betting when we're out of position, sorry. Um, we're going to mostly be free betting versus cut off or button openers, and we should expect to get called a decent amount, so we need hands that play well post flop, and we want to avoid domination. Like I said, if we free betting hands like king jack, king ten, queen jack, when we get action on the boards that we flop a top pair on, we're generally going to be in pretty terrible shape. Whereas if we get action on boards like, uh, if we free bet 9-7 and get action on a uh, 7 high board, 
Uh, if he is like raising, there's more chance of him raising there with like an overpair, like pocket jacks, that slow play preflop. And so we've still got five outs when we do get it in. We also block one of his set combos uh, with seven, like nine, seven on seven, four, two or whatever. Um, whereas when we free, when we get, when we've got like king 10 and we get raised on king high board, like king eight, four, we don't really block any sets because he's not going to have pocket kings much there anyway. Um, and the only hands he's going to be raising with is going to be like king, queen, uh, or slow play days king and we do obviously terribly against those hands so in terms of equity uh, when we get it in or when we get action we definitely want to have more of these uh, suited connector or just general connected hands than we want than these uh, trashy high card hands uh, even hands like seven eight suited six seven uh, uh, even hands like six seven off and eight seven off play much better than hands like king ten or um, queen jack in three bet pots and the reason is just because like I said the boards that you get the boards that uh he gives us credit on the Broadway boards, so we don't need to hit those with trashy hands because he's just going to fold anyway. Um, and the boards that we get played back at on are going to be the low middling boards, so we want to do all that we can to try and hit those boards and have some equity on, on those. Um, also, with some kind of connected or suited hand, we're generally going to have uh, we're going to have a lot more situations where we flop like over cards of a gut shot or an open ender or a flush draw, and so we're going to need him to fold a lot less to the C vet because we've actually got a lot of equity when called. Uh, final point is that when an early position player opens, it can be a good idea to flat uh, ace king out of position. So if you're in the blinds and like middle position or early position player opens, it can definitely be a good idea to slow play ace king and just flat call there because it's not a spot where most people are going to expect you to free bet light. So it's not a spot where they're going to four bet bluff you very often at all. And so therefore getting it in is going to be pretty bad pre-flop if they're not four bet bluffing because obviously ace king is behind their range for getting it in. Um, in addition, when they do call, they're going to be calling to. They're going to be putting you on ace king or ace queen. They're not obviously going to call a free bet if they put you on aces. So again, when the flop comes low, they're going to look to float or make a bluff raise. And when the flop comes high, um, they're just going to play very straightforwardly and, uh, and you know give up the hand. Uh, additionally, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I've got a free bet it so that we. I've got a free bet these high card hands for value, these ace king, these ace, these ace king and ace queen hands for value, so that I can get action when I flop a pair. But of course, if you flat ace king preflop and the flop comes like uh, ace nine six two tone, if you go ahead and check raise there and you're perceived to be a decently aggressive player, he's not just going to fold ace queen or ace jack because your value range is really narrow. He's not expecting you to call cool preflop with ace nine or ace six or nine six. So it's kind of like you're repping sets or nothing. Um, and so it's it's a spot where if you're decently aggressive, you're going to get action with your ace king after slow playing it preflop. Uh, so just want to move on to talk about four betting now. So if regarding four, bet, four betting, we, you, we're either going to four bet as a bluff um, with a hand that we're planning to fold if he jams, or we're going to four bet for value with a hand that we're planning to stack off with if he jams. Um, first, we'll just do a little bit of talk about four bet bluffing. And so uh, if we think he's free betting too much and he's going to give us credit, then it's a good idea to put in a four bet. Um, usually the action is going to go, we're going to open for three, three big blinds. He's going to free bet to 10. Uh, we can now make it 22 and he's in the spot where he has to really shovel fold. Can't really call because uh, there's no real room to play post flop uh, for 100 big blinds. So usually he's going to either shove or fold. And so if we're looking at it, we're risking 19 there because although we make it 22, we've already got three in the pot. And when he folds, we win 13. We win the three that we'd already put in the pot before, which isn't our money anymore. And we win the 10 that he free bet to. Um, we're going to need about 60% fold equity, therefore, to show a profit. And this means that if we think his free bet value range is jacks plus an ace king, then that is a total of 3% of hands, which means that he needs to be free betting about 9% of hands total for our, well, about 9 or 10% of hands total for our full bet to show a profit. Uh, if we have a um, blockers, so if we have like ace x or king x, then he's going to need to be free betting a lot less. Uh, in order for us to show a profit because obviously we block uh, a lot of the combos of uh, ace x or king x obviously you don't need him to be free betting nine or ten percent to break even with a f with a four bet but you shouldn't really be aiming to break even especially in these high variance spots where he's either shoving or folding and you're gonna either you know you're either gonna win 13 or lose 22 you want to be you want to be doing it in clearly uh plus ev spots and that's going to be when he's starting to free bet more like nine or ten percent or even higher um, especially if you think you're going to get credit and he's not just going to spew shove like pocket fours over a four bet. Um, so like I said, mostly you should rely on uh, game flow, um, 
timing, timing not as in his bet timing, timing as in the time of his free bet. Um, if you've recently four bet someone and they folded, then definitely don't four bet bluff now because the chances are they're not going to be free bet and you like because they've already folded to a four bet. So they know that you know they're capable of uh, free bet and light, so they're probably not going to do it again quickly. Um, so yeah, you want to rely on you want to rely on game flow. If you've been quite quiet, then uh, you know it's definitely. And you, yeah, if you've just folded to a few free bets, then it's definitely a good idea to throw in a four bet. A good time to four bet, especially is if you're against an aggressive player. Like the second time that he free bets you, is a good idea to four bet. Um, because the once you start getting to like the third or fourth time before you start four betting him. Um, he's going to start to think that you're probably like getting a bit sick of his free betting and you're looking to make a move. So um, after the second time he's free bet you, it's generally that you're, you're still going to get a bit of credit with a four bet there and it's going to have a good chance of success. Let's talk about four betting for value. Um, our position we're going to have to four bet more because flat and free bet doesn't work so well. Uh, versus aggressive free, free better, we kind of have to fall bet with like ace queen or weaker pairs such as nines. So, for example, when we open the cut off, if, if we've got quite an aggressive free better on the burn who's just going to be re raising us a lot, then we kind of have to fall bet with ace queen and like nines, tens, just because uh, we're going to be exploitable if we fold and he's going to be exploiting that. So, against some people, it doesn't matter if you're exploitable if you fold too much to free bets because if they're a knit, they're just not going to be playing back or they're just not going to be taking advantage of that. But against aggressive players, you definitely need to be um, you definitely need to be capable of four betting a bit lighter for value, just because you don't really have a choice. And also, the more that you're four betting for value, the more you can four bet bluff as well, because of course they can't just five bet like pocket fours, pocket fives, because they're going to get called more often by nines, tens, ace queens. Uh, in position, we can flat a lot more, and it's almost always better to flat ace queen in position than four bet. I know a lot of people against aggressive three betters will just go ahead and four bet ace queen. Problem is that you're never really getting in ahead. Um, if, if, generally, when people start to widen up their shoving range, it's going to include like small pairs before it includes things like weak aces. So um, you're always always getting it in against ace king, and you're always getting it against pairs. But you're never really getting it in against like hands that you dominate. So in terms of all in equity, your equity is actually pretty terrible with ace queen because you're you know you're like you're dominated so much either by a pair or by ace king. Uh, it might be better to four bet medium pairs if you aren't comfortable post flops. So like nines, tens, if you're in position against aggressive free better and you're not comfortable playing post flop, might just be better to go ahead and four bet them because four bet is never going to be bad. It's just that flat in the free bet is usually going to be better and it's usually going to be less variance. Like a big part of uh, big part of poker is obviously psychological and controlling your emotions. The more variance you put yourself through, the uh, the more swings you, the more swings you have. Uh, the more it's going to affect your emotional state, and the more you're going to be like likely to tilt if you end up a couple, if you end up down a couple of buy-ins within like 20 minutes of the session, it's going to put you in a bit of a kind of rubbish mood, and it's not going to make you exactly be thrilled to play the rest of the session. Uh, we definitely want a dynamic to four-bet call with marginal hands, preferably if we've seen him like before. So, if you don't know much about your opponent, if you just know that he's quite an aggressive free better, probably not best to go ahead and four-bet call with like medium pairs. Whether you're out of position or in position, uh, but might just be better to play passive until you get an idea of whether he's actually capable of five bet in light. Because of course, uh, you know, if you if if he isn't, it might just be a sample size issue for a start that he's free betting a lot. Like if you've only got a hundred hands, it's not difficult for someone to be free betting like twelve percent over that sample. But in reality, they might only be free betting like seven or eight percent instead. And so, uh, unless you've got a really big sample or unless you've got a really good dynamic. Um, then you don't want to be, uh, you don't definitely don't want to be four bet calling with marginal hands because it's just going to increase your variance a lot, and that's something that you really don't want to do. Um, finally, we'll talk about four bet bluffing as balance. So we've talked about it a little bit in terms of exploitableness, uh, exploiting our opponent who three bets a lot. We also need to balance the times that we have a big hand because we don't want our opponent to five bet shove light every single time. But if he's only five betting like jacks plus an ace king, and we're only four bet calling with like jacks plus an ace king, that's pretty much a neutral EV spot. So we want to be four betting so that we're uh, we can encourage him to at least uh, be able to occasionally spew shove, um, because that's where we're going to make profit is when he shoves with like six seven suited and runs into our pocket kings. That's where we're going to make money. We don't really make money when he shoves with pocket jacks and we got pocket kings because that's a neutral EV spot. In the other way around, if we had jacks and he had kings, then the same situation would have happened. So if we think about his equity with um, 
some of his bluff hands, like four, pocket fours has 32% versus jacks plus an ace king. Six seven suited has 29% versus the same range. And ace five suited has 30%. So in terms of his EV of when he shoves with around 30% equity, you can see here he's, uh, when he wins 30% of the time, he's going to win 110 because the 10 that he's already, already free, he already free back to is actually in the pot. It's not part of his, it's not part of his shoving stack. And when he loses, he's going to lose 90. Again, the 10 doesn't count because that's already in the pot. So it's the remaining 90 that he has. And he's going to lose that 70% of the time. And his EV there is going to be minus 30 if he gets it in every single time. Now, the part after we 4-bet is 32. And so he's going, to around, he's going to need around 50% folds. So if he thinks we're 4 betting for value of jacks plus an ace-king, then we can only 4-bet total of 6% of hands before we become exploitable and he can just start 5-bet uh, shoving light. Uh, so if we open 50% on the button, we can only 4-bet about 12% 12 um, 12 total in terms of like a 4-bet number. So frequently you're going to find players that have like 20-25% 4-bet, uh, you know, like really super aggressive players. And that, that might be a sample issue, sample size issue, but they're definitely going to be the type of people that are probably 4-betting way too much of the bluff. Um, and so you definitely can go ahead and like... Three bet hands like pocket fours planning to just jam it over a five bet if you know if you know for a fact that they're four bet bluffing too much. But I wouldn't do it straight off the bat. Like if you only got a couple of hundred hands on someone and their four bet shows up to be really high, that can definitely be a sample size issue because they might have only had like four opportunities to four bet. And if they four bet one of those, then it's you know like twenty five percent or whatever. Um, when in reality it might be a lot lower. It might just be that that time they had aces. Um, so in terms of four betting for balance. Obviously, if you're four betting for value with weaker hands, such as pocket nines, pocket tens, and ace queen, then it's going to mean that you can uh, four bet more often because suddenly your value range isn't the top three percent of hands; it's more like the top five percent of hands. So you can four bet a total of like ten percent, or with fifty percent button open, you can four bet a total of twenty percent. Uh, um, but I wouldn't worry too much about these numbers. This is just so that you get an idea of whether you're exploitable or not. You can look and hold and manage your poker tracker, see how often you four bet, just see if you're if you're being exploited there at the moment um, because it's definitely good to think about balance especially if you get big uh, samples against players if you play against them at, like day in day out you're going to want to you're going to want to make sure that you're not really easily exploitable uh, for the most part four bet bluffing is just going to rely on a dynamic and you're just going to want to do it when you uh, when you think that he's when you think that he's you know perhaps free betting you a bit too much and especially when you think you're going to get credit if you four bet you know, for example, if you're perceived as a really straightforward player, he might free bet you. He might free bet bluff you with a really polarized range, and he might free bet bluff you a lot, just thinking that you fold too much. So that's going to be a really good time to put in a four bet versus that type of opponent because he's going to be uh, he's going to either have like aces or kings and just shove straight over it, or he's going to have loads of hands like I don't know, king four suited or six eight suited, and he's just going to he's just going to like snap fold to your uh, snap fold to your four bet because he perceives you as straightforward. Um, there's not much I can say with regards to specific hand history examples. Most of it comes down to history um, and comes down to how your opponents perceive you. You definitely want to think about how you're perceived at tables. Uh, if you're perceived as someone who free bets uh, a lot, then you should definitely expect people to both four bet bluff you and four bet um, you lighter for value. Also, if you're someone who free bets a lot, you want to think about the hands you're free betting. Um, I see a lot of people free bet hands like King 10, Ace 10, uh, Queen Jack. And it just doesn't make sense to you because when the flop comes and you flop a top, you know, you flop top pair, you're not really going to get action. So a lot of people use the logic that they're free betting like King Jack or Queen Jack out of position so that when their opponent calls the pocket eights, they've got two overcards. But that doesn't really matter because when the flop comes like King XX, you're not really going to get to showdown anyway. You're going to get him to fold either on the flop or turn. So you don't need to have hit that board because, you know, you, if, if you think that his range is really weak there, uh, which is obviously your logic for like two barrel in the queen jack on queen xx. Uh, if you think his range is, contains a lot of eights, nines, tens hands that are going to fold to the second barrel, then you can just two barrel with one of the bluffs and you're going to get the same amount of folds anyway. Um, so it doesn't actually matter that you've got top pair in that example because you're not getting a showdown versus worse. Um, and yeah, these, these suit connectors and these off, even these offsuit connectors are much better hands to free bet. You're just going to want to make sure that you pick a good time to do it because... Uh, you know, you need to be uh, you need to be perceived as straightforward. If you're if you're perceived to be a really aggressive free better, maybe you've been at the table a few orbits and you just happen to pick up ace king, aces, queens, and you've gone ahead and free bet a lot, then definitely don't start free bet bluffing with these kind of connected hands because people are going to be more likely to four bet bluff you 
or four bet you lighter for value because they just perceive you as a, a bit of a three bet monkey. Uh, additionally, against fish, like you're not going to want a free bet, obviously, with these suit connectors, but you're going to want to widen your range. And that's because when you actually have like King Jack on King XX or Ace 10 on Ace XX, you can usually get two or three streets of value from worse hands, whereas against regulars, you can't. So I hope that's cleared up anything that you, uh, any confusions that you had with free betting and four betting. I hope that you've learned something from the video. Definitely, if you have any questions, then again, get in contact with me. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, so yeah, I'm I, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you've enjoyed the other two that I've made already and uh, part four and five uh, will be on its way soon. So thanks for watching. This has been Jack for iPokerVIP.net. Take care and good luck at the tables.